Our daughter had an experience of life and death that most of us don't have. And she talked about communicating with those who had passed on. Something was happening that I couldn't explain that was very real. And then she told us something else, something I wasn't prepared for. When Anna was around nine, Anna started talking about having these visions of an ancient world in her life there. The way she talked about it was as if she was actually walking around the place where she used to live. She described caves. She described a desert-like environment, simple homes, life events, times of transition living in caves with community members. Her description led me to believe that this was an ancient civilization. She was being very descriptive from the perspective of someone who lives there, not from the perspective of someone who imagined it or wrote a book about it. It was as if she could see herself doing the daily tasks that her life there involved. It wasn't so much the words that Anna was using, it was more of the way she was saying it. The more she spoke, the more I realized she was merely reporting what she had seen and that there was a whole set of experiences and emotions that came with it. How, how could a little girl have all of this information about this ancient civilization? Anna's been reluctant to talk about this experience with a lot of other people. It's not something that kids normally talk about at school. It can be a little lonely when you're the only one in your circle who has this type of experience. One day, Anna told me about a traumatic event that happened involving an earthquake in her village. Anna told me that the earthquake was such that parts of the ground started to open and sands fell in and roofs started collapsing and much of the townspeople fled and she described it very specific as if she were witnessing it all over again. I was amazed. Anna has drawn several of her memories. One of the first things that she drew was islands where she used to live. It was as if she drew a map that she once saw when she was there. Anna starts recalling spontaneously. The other morning, she woke up and said, I just remembered the entire language. And she said, I don't know how, I, I don't know what's going on, but I need a piece of paper and a pen. She drew them on a three by five card for me and began to put English words next to some of them. It looked like ancient writings. This whole thing is blowing me away. When we started to find information that matched what she told us, we were amazed. We were online one day. On the screen was that scientists had found this ancient civilization named Heracleon. It was a digital recreation of what they think Heracleon resembled. Heracleon was an ancient civilization that had been discovered underwater in the year 2000. Its beginning goes back to about 12th century BC. Researchers had said that it was a port city and that a big earthquake led to it being underwater. So the experience that Anna describes of a series of earthquakes is very much like Heracleon. And Heracleon was on an odd-shaped island when Anna and I saw that, we thought, that's exactly what you drew. I started to wonder, is she remembering a past life? I realized this is not something coming from media or her imagination. This was a remembrance. It was confirmation that past lives exist. My name is Anna. I'm 11, and I'm in sixth grade. When I was younger, I had memories of living in an ancient town. I would have vivid memories of 
doing daily activities. I remember that there was an earthquake. I feel like Heraclan is connected to my past life. It was pretty cool to find that something that they've found now connects to something from back then. I feel very convinced that her experiences are real to her, is something beyond a child's imagination. I, I can't imagine being nine years old and having this entire other life come into your consciousness. I do feel like my parents believe me and that I had a past life. I don't really feel comfortable talking to my friends about this because they may not understand. For Anna, knowing that there are kids out there who have similar kinds of experiences who feel very grounding. It would be pretty exciting to meet someone who has had a past life memory. Our family has made arrangements to travel to Nevada to meet with other families who have had similar experiences. Right now, we're headed to a group called Earth Angels, and it's a gathering uh, for families who have children who've had similar experiences to Anna. I have never met someone who's had a similar experience to me. Well, it'd be kind of cool to know that there's someone out there that's kind of like me, in a way. We just arrived at the house. I'm really excited to see who's going to be here and how it's going to go for Anna. Hi! Hi. I'm Erin. Hi, I'm Jillian. From the moment Anna walked in, kids were greeting her with smiles and curiosity. Can you guys say hi to Anna? Hi, Anna! <laughs> this felt very welcome and very connected. Hi, my name is Jared. Jared, nice to meet you. I'm Jillian. Thank you for, for welcoming us. You're so Welcome, everyone. This is Earth Angel Sanctuary and Learning Center. As soon as I walked in, it felt like, oh, community, you know. We're all in this together rather than carrying this by ourselves. It's as much of a support group for us as it is for the right. kids just to have, sure. to be able to be themselves. That's how we started, was she yeah. just wanted to invite like kids and their families to have a place to go and to talk and to realize that they're not the only one. Well, I felt a giddy kind of excitement. Yeah. And hearing from hearing about other people's stories, their kids' stories. There's only a few friends that I felt comfortable enough to tell them. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to paint whatever you decide that you want to paint. It was just great to be in the company of other people that have gone through kind of different experiences. I hope that, that she takes away validation for her experience and a sense of community and camaraderie.